Hi everyone, in today's behind the scenes video on my short film Anxiety Train, I'm gonna show you how I used and utilized the Filmic Pro app to create my short film. That way you can take these practices into your short films and feature films and projects so you can make the most of the Filmic Pro app. Let's get into it. Now the first settings that I looked at with Filmic Pro when I was making Anxiety Train, and you should too, is your frames per second and matching that with your shutter speed. So what I mean by that is you want your frame rate set at 24 frames per second and match that by doubling that number into your shutter speed. So your shutter speed should be 1 over 48. Why do you want to double your frames per second into your shutter speed? Well that's so you get motion blur, that real film professional quality like motion blur that you see in movies. And you see this in Anxiety Train a couple of times when the train's coming in in particular you can see the writing on the train is very very blurred and you can see in a few of these images and shots as well where the blur looks really nice and smooth. If you have the open shutter speed rather than a match shutter speed to the frames per second, that means you're going to end up having quite sort of sticky movement. It's not going to be a smooth blur across the screen. It's just going to be a bit staccato. Now, because I'm in the UK, in Europe, our energy frequencies are slightly different to that too in America, Canada, those kind of countries. So here I use 1 over 50 shutter speed and match that with a 25 frames per second. So I'm just bringing that frames per second up by one and then doubling that into the shutter speed. The reason being with the energy frequency differences we have here in Europe, it can cause a light rippling effect down on your screen when you're filming uh, with a 24 frames per second with a 1 over 48 shutter speed. By cranking that frames per second 1 into 25 frames per second and bringing that shutter speed into 1 over 50 frames per second, we still get the motion blur. It looks identical to using 24 frames per second and you avoid that light rippling effect. So always make sure you've got your frame rates and your shutter speed set to exactly where you need it. The next setting in Filmic Pro that was really important to getting a really professional look in Anxiety Train was to make sure that the white balance was spot on every single take that I could possibly make it. Now, white balance is really important to get your color correct. So if it's not correct to your eyes, what you're seeing, chances are on screen, it's not gonna be correct when you get it out in post-production. But with Filmic Pro, it's really great. You've got a few different presets that you can use rather than using the auto white balance and the hope. So I was using the sunshine one, I was using the cloudy skies one, the different types of lighting presets they had, as well as using the auto white balance when some of those presets didn't quite work out for the type of lighting I was using. So Filmic Pro is great for that. You've got a variety of ways to get the white balance correct. But I was literally going from one location to the other, doing the white balance, seeing if it matched what I was seeing in my eyes in real life, and then going with that. It ended up being perfect that way. There was a couple of shots that I forgot to do that. So there's an indoor shot with uh, Izzy on the sofa. I had one take where it was slightly yellow in color, and then the rest were perfect. So just make sure you keep an eye on that white balance and make sure that it's perfect every single time because it's gonna be a pain in the backside when you get to post-production and you've got white balance that's mixed in different shots. Now let's talk about ISO because that number on the left-hand side here, which is currently at 33, is the most important number other than your frames per second and shutter speed that you'll need to get the cleanest and best looking footage. So essentially this brightens your image. So as it is now, it looks perfect. I've got an ND filter over my phone as well, which is keeping the light out of the sensor so much so I keep the shutter speed down. But if I raise it, you can see the highlights get blown out very, very quickly. So when you're outside, that's one of the reasons you want to keep that shutter speed right down, is to make sure that you get nice clean footage and your highlights aren't blown out. But you're in more darker shadow areas, you can then see the image really getting noisy. So if you go indoors, I'm looking into my bathroom now, you can see the shadow of me in the mirror there. If I raise this ISO up, yes, you can start to see in the bathroom, but actually the noise gets worse and worse and worse and worse. So you wanna keep that ISO really low. Even if you're working in nighttime, using that silhouette that I got here on the mirror works really well. So I actually use a silhouette for one of the shots in Anxiety Train, which works super well. And that way you can get a nice bit of definition on your shot. And that's what I use to get a nice professional look on Anxiety Train. Now, one of the most important features on Filmic Pro, especially when it comes to organizing your shots and then into post-production, is the CMS. Now, CMS is your content management system. So what you have to do is go into your settings, you'll see CMS on the left hand side of that settings panel, click on that, and then you can then start setting up the labeling of your shots. So when you come into post-production, you know exactly what those shots are and what takes they are as well. Now, if you don't label all this way, you're gonna end up having a series of numbers as the name labels for your files when you come to post-production. Those numbers will represent the time that they were filmed and the dates that they were filmed, which could be helpful to you. But if you actually turn on the content management system and turn that toggle on so it's blue, that way you can enable the production name, the scene name, and what take it is. So for me, it was Anxiety Train, or I might have put a AT to shorten it so that I could see all of it in one title on my files on my flash drive. Then what scene it is, so it would be makeup or bedroom scene, and then what take it is. So I'd always make sure that take obviously started at one every time we started a new series of a scene. The main thing to remember as well with using the content management system 
is to make sure that every time you go to a new location, you set that take number to one so that you can actually start from the beginning. Otherwise you might start from 15, which is what you just shot before, and you have 15 to 20 in your take numbers of your next shot and your next scene instead of one to five. So just make sure every time you go to a different location or you start a new scene, you reset that take number, relabel that scene number, and you can keep that production name the same, of course, because you'll be making the same project. Also, whilst you're using this, you can actually favorite your clips as well. So if there's a take that you know you really, really like, and that's gonna be the best one, you can put your finger on that star, turn it yellow, and you know when you come to post production, it'll have it starred still, and you know which take was the best that you want to use, saving you time as well. So utilize that CMS. It's very, very helpful for not only organizing your clips when you're looking through them, but also to make sure that you can then organize them in post production. Now, one of the most interesting interesting and important features on Filmic Pro that I use for Anxiety Train, my short film, is the stabilization. Now within Filmic Pro, if you've got the iPhone 12 or newer, and same for Android, if you've got the newest ones, you should have four different types of stabilization. Well, you've got off, which is the first one, so you're just going completely freehand. You've got on, which is kind of standard stabilization. You've got cinematic stabilization and cinematic plus stabilization. Now, I didn't want to have it completely off. Even though I was going for that handheld look, it was just too jittery, way too shaky, and it would have been really distracting for the audience, and you would have felt seasick watching it. But using this standard stabilization was the perfect sweet spot for my film. So the standard stabilization is what I used in Anxiety Train, and if you want to go for that handheld look in a film, as you'll see from Anxiety Train, it looks brilliant. So the standard stabilization is exactly what I used, and that's what I'd advise if you want to go for a handheld look in your film. Now a big choice I had to make with Filmic Pro settings with my Film Anxiety Train is which lens I wanted to use. Now if I go into the lens settings here next to the storage and battery meter, this little V open shape, that gives me the selfie, the wide or the ultra wide. Now bearing in mind I wanted to create a sense of anxiety, a sense of fear and feeling trapped. If I use the ultra wide angle lens it just doesn't give you that kind of feel. It makes it feel quite safe, it makes everything feel quite picturesque and beautiful. It really just didn't do any favours for the story of the film, the narrative or the tone of it. So I then changed it to the wide angle lens, the regular wide. And as you can see already, I then start getting much closer and this allows me to get even closer than that to the character's face to create that feeling of being trapped and make that feel of that we're right there with her, feeling those emotions, feeling that anxiety. And I use this close up all the time in the film. I did some wide shots so you can see the locations of where she is and how busy it was. But by and large, most of the shots were very, very tight to her, so it could feel very claustrophobic. Of course, I also used the telephoto lens with this as well, so that was another way to get even closer and get tightness around her face. But the wide angle lens that you can see here was the one for me. So make sure you choose a lens that makes sense to your story and use what Filmic Pro gives you here in the lens choices. When it came to audio, it was really easy to sort out in Filmic Pro actually in terms of the level settings. So on the right hand side, you can see the audio bar and it moves as your voice moves. Now that white line on the right hand side is the marker for your audio, where your levels are on the right hand side here. So wherever you have that is gonna dictate how your audio comes back to you in post-production. So where it is now in between minus five, minus 25 is where you want it, bring it low. You can see that actually it starts to bring the levels down and the levels don't get as high as they would do when you bring it down. Bring it up, it gets louder and you can see it going red and orange and that's actually making it peak, that's making the audio clip. So you're losing detail, just like an ISO, when you bring that number too high, you lose detail in the highlights or in the shadows when you bring it too low. Sometimes the audio, it does the same kind of thing. So keep that white bar between minus five and minus 25. If you're using an older phone, you wanna keep it in between the last two sets of zeros on the bottom there. But otherwise, this is the perfect sweet spot for your audio to get the best audio in post-production. And that way, you won't have to do loads of different things in post-production to fix it. You can raise it a little or lower it a little, but that's all you'll need to do. Now, a lot of people ask me about what color profile did I film in with Filmic Pro. So I could have gone with natural, which gives me obviously the look you see with your own eyes. Linear, which gives you a much more dark and shadowy look. HLG, which gives you a bit more dynamic range. It'll be flat if you've got an older phone. If you've got an older phone, you'll be using Log V2. This one has Log V3, the iPhone 12. This gives you even more dynamic range in the highlights and the shadows. Now, I didn't feel safe using Log V3 because I hadn't used it before. HLG, I wasn't too sure either. So I went with natural. Now the pros of using the natural profile was simply that if I knew I had it looking correct in the camera there live at location as to what I'm seeing with my own eyes, I knew when I got back to my editing that that would be perfect and ready to go and start coloring. Whereas if I used the flat or log profile, I just didn't feel safe that I knew what I was gonna get when I came back to editing. I hadn't used it enough, particularly log V3. So I'll probably use log V3 in my next film, but with this one, I went with natural. Now when it came to colouring my footage, what I used was a LUT from Moment. So I went to the Moment website, went to presets, went to video LUTs, 
and I don't have the time to learn color grading. So it really was a case of me finding something that I could just layer over this image and the shots that I have to create the right kind of look for my film. Now they got lots of different LUT packs which look really fantastic, but none of these ones particularly worked for the feel that I wanted for my film. I wanted to have that kind of isolated feel, that kind of cold feeling that she's got the whole time. And I did think about the warm one to kind of contradict with how she's feeling, but it just didn't work well with me, it didn't sit right with the film tone. So I ended up using Cinematic Green Mobile Filmmaking. Now this one's really fantastic, it costs $19.99. You do get a discount if you get multiple, but I got one. And you can see here, it kind of takes away a lot of the blues in the image and it gets it much more of a green tone and it just makes it feel a lot cooler. It says here you get rich colours while perfecting skin tones. Film reminiscence, so it gives it that slight grainy feel which makes it feel like old film. So it gives that phone footage the filmic feel. And then it also is made for an iPhone. So it works really well with the footage that I got. And even though I didn't shoot in Log V3 or flat, it still came out really, really well. I think because I was shooting in 10-bit colour, that helped a lot as well to make sure that this lap came over and transferred really nicely to my shots. You can also see at the bottom how it changes the image, so that would be how it looks normally. That's how it looks with the LUT. And you can do that throughout all these images on their website. It's really clear, really precise, and shows you visually how it's going to change your footage. So this is how I coloured my footage. Very simple. And I just simply went to my shots in DaVinci Resolve, selected which LUTs I wanted to use, clicked on it, and it was done. I just did that for every single shot. So you don't have to go above and beyond to get a really great look for your film. If you don't have the time like I don't for colour grading, simply find the LUTs that work well for you. But this is what I use for colour grading. I also shot my footage in 4K resolution to help me out in the post-production, give me more options for zooming in, that kind of stuff. 10-bit colour and use Filmic Extreme. Now when it came to exporting my files, as you can see here, the labelling of them using the CMS really worked out. I can see 80 Anxiety Train ending the last scene. I then exported these files into my flash drive, my iExpand flash drive. And then from there, once I selected it and saved them onto it, I was then able to put that into my laptop and use it with DaVinci Resolve and start editing. So that's how I use Filmic Pro settings. This is the last episode of my behind the scenes videos on Anxiety Train, my short film guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about Filmic Pro and how to use all of its features and how I use them to make this film in even more detail, then do check this playlist out on screen right now. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye bye.